This episode is brought to you by Airbnb. Hey, Pashi. Hey, Sufi. It's been a while. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, I haven't seen you in a bit. Haven't um, seen each other, and we're uh, talking, I'm talking to you from New York City. I just ended a three-week hiatus that was due to the Olympics being on NBC. I'm very excited to be back in New York City, very excited to be doing the shows. But, Pashi, I have a question for you. Yeah. Do you enjoy the Olympics? Oh, my God. It was great. I, I love the Olympics. I've always loved the Olympics. Um, and I know I've mentioned this previously about how many times I cried during the opening ceremonies, but yeah. I will sort of pick my way through the Olympics coverage over the course of a day. Mm -hmm. And I cry almost 10 times a day. Yeah. Uh, I just, I love it so much. I get so, um, I've, I've said before, I get sort of, uh, uh, when people perform, is it really gets me emotionally. And I feel like these athletes are just performing at such a high level. And it is just the ultimate achievement for so many of them and for their families. That emotion really gets that me. That family thing it. kills me. The, I, you know what? Look, NBC, obviously I work for NBC. NBC, not a sponsor of the podcast. Mm -mm. So I want to make sure that no one thinks this is hashtag ad. NBC did a great job covering these Olympics. There were yeah. a lot of really, I mean, Snoop Dogg is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Flavor Flav, Kevin Hart and Keenan Thompson did a great job. Our friend Colin Jost did a fantastic job in Tahiti until his foot fell off and he had to fly <laughs> home to get yeah. a new foot. Um, it was just great. Mike Tirico. Love Mike Tirico. Uh, Hoda Kopp just dancing in the stands. It was great. Tom Cruise yeah. coming yeah. down a big old thing. Yeah. You know what? It was uh, just fantastic. I, this morning, was reading like top 10 moments. And I'm back in the city and uh, and the kids and Alexia are still on vacation. And I was crying just reading the list of, of best moments. And then yeah. Alexi FaceTimed me and she was like, oh, are you crying? And I was like, yeah, I was watching <laughs> Olympic stuff. And you can imagine the speed in which she was like, ugh. <laughs> Uh, Simone Biles and Jordan uh, Childs uh, bowing to the Brazilian gymnast. So classy. Sobbing. Yeah. Uh, that American who won the 1500. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Was it the 1500 or the 10,000? Which I, I thought it was the 1500. Yeah, it was the 1500. Yeah, yeah. Because it was, it was like a... Oh, but by the way, I'm going to transition. Yeah. I ran a 5K this weekend. Oh, okay. <laughs> Was that too abrupt a transition? No, I just, uh, yeah. I don't know that. Let's Were see you if done I, talking let's about see if the I cry. Let's see okay. if I cry. Let's see if you cry. This will be a good test <laughs> uh -huh. of how, of whether, because you, I know this, you love me more than any of the Olympic athletes. A hundred percent true. So this is really going to show the depths of how uh, meager my achievement was that you're not going to even get a little bit choked up. Well, I don't know. Let's hear about it. Tell me about it. Well, it was a big year for me. Uh-huh. Because uh, I'm 50. Yeah. So, you know, they, you, oh, you new, are, division. new division. You're in a new division. <laughs> but I also haven't been running. Two years ago, I was running a lot. Uh huh. And I have not been running the same amount now. Right. And I'm feeling a little sad, right? Because I'm like, oh, this means I'm dying. You, mm -hmm. you know, and again, we're all, uh, you know, a year closer to death, right? Yeah. I mean, every day we're a day closer to death. So I was definitely feeling like I was really depressed at the starting line, thinking about how much, how sad I was going to be when I saw my time, because uh -huh. I felt like it would be, the, it was going to be the Reaper's scythe tapping me on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Pashi, I run the race only 12 seconds slower than I was two years ago. Oh, wow. And I'm going to tell you something. 90, there were 99. 50 to 59-year-olds in my 5K. You came in 100th? 15th. 15th. There you Not go. Not bad, right? Yeah. Also, yeah. that's a good... Um, I feel like now you can taste the top 10. And, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. And next year, there's only going to be, you know, those, those people that were 49 turning 50 who are going to pop into yeah. it. Yeah. There's a handful, obviously a handful of new blood. As, uh -huh. as much as you can be new blood at the age of 50. <laughs> <laughs> Spring chickens. Yeah. Are you yeah. comfortable sharing your time? Uh, yeah, I'm comfortable. I, I can tell you uh, I was I ran 752s was my, my, my mile pace. Okay. All right. That's Not good. Bad. 
I, I bet. I, I'm wondering right now, you know, leave it in the comments. Did you think it was going to be that fast or are you disappointed <laughs> it was slower than you thought? Yeah. Or, I mean, I bet the majority of people won't know. I don't think most people know what they run a mile in. Yeah, that's true. I think runners do. Yeah. But I don't think most and people I think the I don't bummer, know what I run a mile I in. I think the bummer for me is runners know and they won't be impressed by that. Number. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. But I want Anyone you to that know, knows won't be impressed. Can I tell you, if you don't know, <laughs> that's really good. That's what that number I just said is really good. Um, I also had a nice moment at the airport. Young, you're real. Now we're talking real. I'm going to guess 20 to 29 is this guy's age division. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Baggage handler at the airport. Yeah. Says, uh, saw you at the race. And I said, you beat me? And he went, yeah. <laughs> and I went by, I go by a lot. And he goes, by a lot less than I thought I would. And I was like, oh, all right. Yeah. yeah. He goes, I looked at, he goes, I looked up your time afterwards and you, you were closer to me than I thought you'd be. I was like, all right. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a little feather in your cap. It's sort of a dirty, dirty feather you found on the street. <laughs> if you're not, if you're not watching on YouTube, I should note, Posh is sobbing right now. <laughs> Tears are pouring down Pashi's face. <laughs> hey, oh. uh, I, I, I have something else to say about our guest today, uh, Giovanni Ribisi. Yeah. Um, lovely conversation. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he's a cinematographer of this new movie. And, you know, obviously I, I knew him as an actor. Like, right after we chatted with him, I was on a plane. Mm-hmm. And uh, Lexi was watching Friends. And I was watching Saving Private Ryan. Gotcha. And it, at, at a moment, Rabisi was literally on screen on both of our TVs because he, uh, he played Phoebe's uh, brother, I think. I don't know. The sound was off. Yeah. Can I tell you something about um, Friends, the show? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Everybody's watching it on planes. Everybody's watching it. Everybody's like teenage kids are obsessed yeah. with it. And they're like, oh, we're we're." I'm watching it like through for my third time, like all the way straight through. People, people love friends. People love friends. Also, I'm, you know, I don't need to tell you how good a movie Saving Private Ryan is. I sometimes just found myself watching friends with the, I couldn't hear it. Mm -hmm. I just, the six of them were so in the pocket at what they were doing. <laughs> the friends is actually really fun to watch. <laughs> like even without sound, they're just so good. Yeah, I've seen a few episodes of Friends, but Friends missed me just based on where I was in my life. Friendless. I feel like that was back when you were friendless. <laughs> and I, I didn't want any you, fake friends. You, I, I remember like, you were always like, they're friend. rubbing it in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was in college and I wasn't watching TV in college. Mm -hmm. And then I moved overseas right after school. Yeah. And so we, Amsterdam, we weren't getting like the... Uh, the sort of current TV lineup that we were getting in the States. And then I moved back and I just sort of, I feel like it finished when I was back, but I wasn't invested. So that's one that maybe, uh, maybe in time I will, I will go yeah. through just like all the kids are today. Yeah, and revisit. Yeah. Uh, again, you were in Amsterdam with friends came out. This is, I just want to, again, sometimes I like to show you off, Pashi. I like to show off your oh. skills. Uh, tell them real quick, what is the Dutch word for friends? Vrienden. Amazing. Just has it. Ik heb zoveel vrienden. Ja, ik heb geen yeah. idee. Vrienden, uh, ja, mijn, how do you say favorite? Uh, I don't know. Mijn, uh, Should I, we just say favorite? Should we just yes, pretend? Probably, it's a, probably my, pretty close. My favorite friend is, is Rose. <laughs> is Rose? <laughs> Ross. That's how they say Ross. <laughs> <laughs> ik, ik lik in, ik lik in rolls. <laughs> he having an, an, a monkey. What is monkey? How do you say monkey? Appen? Apia. 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 Ap. Apa. How do you say like? I, I don't remember anything. How do you say like? Uh, now I'm just, I'm getting caught in my, uh, my Spanish yeah. now. Right. Yeah. Oh, right. Because you, now you're learning Spanish. Ik lik in rolls, ik heb in apia. I'd like to apologize <laughs> to all our Dutch <laughs> listeners. Uh, what is, how do you say smart? I can't remember smart. Smart is slim. Like, oh yeah, slim. I knew it was a different word. Yeah. That, the joy is need, need to slim. <laughs> that joy? Joey. Oh my God. Do you oh. not know any of the characters? God, you really <laughs> don't. 
I mean, like you can not watch Friends and no. Can you name all six friends? This is crazy to me. Name the six friends' first names. Uh, Ross, Rachel, Joey, Phoebe. Yeah. Um, Courtney Cox and Matthew Perry are the ones missing. If that helps. Yeah. You uh, no, I'll know. I mean, I'll know them when you say them, but I don't. Go go. They, never, and, they were never my friends. Uh, they were Go Go and Scooch. <laughs> <laughs> They had the, a new show. They had a like spinoff, Go Go and Scooch, that did, didn't do hey, well, right? We want to we want to hear more of your questions. <laughs> we like doing listener episodes. Uh, please send it to us at speakpipe dot com slash family trips pod. Uh, questions like, how do you not know all six of the friends' names? <laughs> did you watch Seinfeld? Yeah. Okay. Just feels like that was the same era. Also, no, no, you no, can Seinfeld send us. First. You can send us uh, video questions, and we would we could show you. You could be on our YouTube as you ask your question at familytripspod at gmail dot com. It's just look at us. We're just it's like riding a bike, you and I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, feats. That's the Dutch word for bike. Well done. Isn't that funny? Because yeah. like feet is like what we have to use when we don't have a bike. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh, Enjoy, it's, this uh, is, now it's like falling off a bike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Enjoy Giovanni Rabisi, everybody. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Here we I go. had to hit, hey, all right, <laughs> hello. Hey there. How's it going? Well, it's how are so, you? Hanging in there, hanging in there. Nice. So I, I, we're going to get to family trips, but uh, Giovanni, I have to say something, because I, when I read uh, that you were the cinematographer on this movie, I, I thought, oh, that must be wrong. He clearly directed. But no, right. you're the cinematographer, <laughs> yeah. because a yeah. lot of my friends who um, have acted first, when they eventually direct a movie, I'll say, oh my God, that seems so hard. And they'll say, oh, it's actually not that hard because you just say what you want and the cinematographer has to figure it out. So right. you actually are doing the hard job. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I think there's a lot that goes, obviously that goes into directing, but uh, yeah, for me, I, I mean, I guess I, I've been sort of trying to understand it myself. Uh, my, my, my mother, was, I grew up, she was always into photography and um, I, for the last 30 years, I've had cameras in my hand. Um, and I think that I can sort of summarize it by saying that I, I got into acting when I was really young. I think I was like nine or 10 years old. And it was a nine or 10 year old decision to do that. And then I kind of just got swept away in, in that. And, and during the last 40 years of, of that career, you know, my curiosity was always into cameras and, and camera work. And then, you know, I, I eventually sort of more or less came out of the closet and you know, yeah. I've just been doing it for <laughs> the last 15 years. And, and, uh, and, and really it was just a, an incredible experience. I mean, it's just, uh, one of the hardest, worst experiences I've had, but, but also the best, you know. So. Were you someone, when you were young on a set, were you the kind of actor who was asking questions uh, to the cameraman and the directors? All the time. Okay. Well, if you think about it, I mean, you know, depending on what the setup is, the, there's this machine that's right there with three people surrounding it. And those are, that, I mean, those were my friends growing up. You know, I, I, I literally grew up and went to school on, on set. And so, yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. I watched the trailer uh, for your film, oh, Strange yeah. Darling. And it does, in the middle of the trailer, it says, go in blind. Uh, or yeah. Like you should go in <laughs> blind. And I was like, oh, I almost want to stop watching this trailer, but it is. Right. It is right up my alley, and I oh, am very really? much oh, cool. a very much a person that yes. if someone says see this movie, don't lay eyes on anything about it, don't learn anything about it. I will take that to heart. Um, so yeah, wow. it uh, it looks like I mean thriller horror something yeah. in that in that world. I will just say as well, I I started to read a review, a very good review that also said go in blind, basically, and I realized, oh look at this, everybody's saying to know as go, little as yeah, possible. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I guess we could talk. You know, yeah, it's interesting because we we got the the movie financed, I guess, based on the fact that we were like, yeah, it's a thriller, it's a horror film, you know, it's a scream queen kind of thing, 
And then, I, you know, while we were in production, we tried to pull the wool over there and, and do something that maybe was, um, I don't know, I, you know, more unique or what, I don't know, whatever. Uh <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but again, yeah, it was, it was this interesting thing cause it was a, it was a really small budget. It was, I mean, in comparison to what, what else is going on, you know, in the economics of the film world. And, uh, and I mean, we, it, what we went through in order to do, it was really like just getting down and dirty and, and, and such a different experience from, coming out of your trailer and be like, I don't want to say that, you know, <laughs> yeah. the, the actor kind of thing. Um, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, there's just, there's a lot, it's just still sort of like un unpacking it all. Mm. Uh, you mentioned your mom, uh, always into photography. You grew up in LA. Both yeah. your parents were mm -hmm. in the entertainment industry. Yeah. Well, no, so my mother, no, they weren't. My, my yeah. mother got into the entertainment uh, industry with me when I was a kid. Um, yeah, in the uh, uh, early '80s, I guess it was, and so um, uh, yeah, I mean, she was. It was just an incredibly supportive uh, feat on her on her part, you know, uh, just um, driving around, you know, uh, it, uh, auditioning five auditions a day, in Los Angeles, you know, like that whole thing. So. Yeah, and then and your father was not uh, was not in the business. No, he was a uh, he uh, he was uh, you know he had his own business and he was uh, he's a, he's in the printing business. He was a print okay. broker. Yeah, gotcha. And, and sibling wise, you have one twin sister, and yeah. then your other sister is older or younger. Younger, she's uh, two years younger. We're essentially triplets. I mean, it was like yeah, <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you guys That's are very pretty close. kind. We're oh, two, yeah, years. we're two years. Yeah, and a lot of we get a lot of twin people will say, "Are you twins?" Which yeah, is something I you say only when you see us in two different places. If you see us right. next to each other, <laughs> 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 that's when Wait. it really pops that Josh is younger. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so, but did, when did you guys get involved in in the entertainment business industry? After college. After so we college, were both, right? Yeah, we were both yeah. sort of like college improvisers, and then we sort of found our way into like. Uh, like working for theater troops and and that sort of thing. And but was it something that you guys always knew that you guys wanted to do when you were, or it was just something that that it, I don't it, think so. The seeds were there. Yeah, I, mean, I but, went to. I wanted to. I mean, I was a film major when I went to college, and I. This is why I'm also impressed about your path towards cinematography, which is I had the opposite of your curiosity, which is I think I wanted film to only be storytelling. And then my yeah. intro to film class, I realized, oh my God, this is so technical. And this feels like science class in high school. And I was bad at that. And so I have to find a different path. Um, yeah. Whereas it seems like you were drawn to that. And I, you know, I have a lot of friends who are, you know, talk about cameras and lenses and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, where, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go grab a beer. I'm impressed. I, I mean, their work always looks fantastic, but I, I mean, it's more the, uh, a shortcoming of mine as opposed to anything else. Yeah, I mean, it really is this thing where it, it's not just, the, I mean, you get past the technical stuff and, and but it's, you know, the workload. I mean, it, it's, it, there's this notion that being on a, or set life or whatever is sort of glamorous and it's just, it's not. I mean, it is just, it, you know, you're up at four o'clock in the morning and working all day until the sun goes down. And it's it's an industry and it's there's just a lot that goes into it. And like somebody was saying on set, you, you have to have a certain kind of gene. And, and it's a, it really separates the world of being an actor and being a, a crew member who's got to like sort of pull this thing through to, to the finish line. Hey, we're going to take a quick break and hear from some of our sponsors. Family Trips is supported by Airbnb. Hey, Bashi. Yes, Sufi. You know, the Pittsburgh Steelers schedule comes out and we just immediately, you, me, mom, dad, start trying to find our weekend. Yeah, we, we look in that calendar and then, yeah, we sort of throw our marker down. And then once we throw our marker down, our next stop is Airbnb because we, last year, famously, all stayed together under one roof in a wonderful home in Pittsburgh. Years before, we'd done hotels, and it just was such a nicer way to do it. Yeah, it's nice to wake up, come downstairs, make a pot of coffee, and then have mom and dad roll out and have that coffee ready. Have some bagels. Just be able to sit around and have breakfast and feel almost like it would feel if we were in our own home. And you know what we had? 
that was really special. We had a porch swing. Uh huh. We took photos on a porch swing. Yeah. Can I say something? Every one of them worse than the last. <laughs> and I will say porch swings are wonderful. They take worse photos than you think. I think porch swings are good to take photos of children. I think for adults, it's just all thigh. Hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was yeah. a real meaty, like a lot of meaty thighs in that photo. I think I was standing off to the side. Yeah, you were smart. Point is, maybe you're someone right now who's listening. You're like, I got a porch swing. I've got one of these houses that has these little details, the details that I've put a lot of thought into. And maybe a family would like to come and stay at my place instead of at a hotel. Your home might be worth more than you think. Find out how much at airbnb.com slash host. Support comes from Babbel. Hey, Pashi. Yes, Yuffie. Have you ever found yourself holding back on travel plans because you're afraid of the language gap? Well, no need to mind the gap if you have Babbel. Speak like a whole new you with Babbel, the science-backed language learning app that gets you talking. Wasting hundreds of dollars on private tutors is the old school way of learning a new language. Babbel's 10 minute lessons are quick, handcrafted by over 200 language experts. Pashi, you're just drilling down, right? Yeah, yeah. You're gonna be a polyglot thanks to Babbel's tips and tools. Grounded in the real life stuff, you'll actually need, everything is focused on conversation, so you'll be ready to talk wherever you go. Yeah, and don't take my word for it. Studies from Yale, Michigan State University and beyond continue to prove that Babbel works. One study found that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college. Now I should know, when I took a full semester at college in any class, I almost never showed up for 15 hours. <laughs> right, so, well. And I also have zero retention. So I guess in the, in the end, Babbel would have been a better use of my time. You should have maybe gone to Babbel University instead of Northwestern. <laughs> yeah, exactly. With over 16 million subscriptions sold, Babbel's 14 award-winning language courses are backed by a 20-day money-back guarantee. So no pressure. Buy Babbel. We'll travel. Here's a special limited-time deal for our listeners. Right now, get up to 60% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash trips. Get up to 60% off at babbel.com slash trips, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash trips. Rules and restrictions may apply. So when you as a family were able to get out of LA and get away from this uh, that Hollywood life, where, uh, where would you guys go? Did you have sort of regular trips or are there any classic trips that stand out to you? That, yeah, that's, I mean, Actually, recently, uh, there was this, on Memorial Day, I guess, I was, uh, I was, it was early in the morning, I was working um, in my office and my daughter, who's five years old, she's also a twin, we have twins, um, came in and she said, I want to go camping in the trailer. And um, and actually, my, my first thought was, we have a trailer? And the, oh, yeah, it's that thing <laughs> in, the, in the driveway, right? Uh, that, you know, guests from out of town, they come and they stay there. And so um, it was, you know, cutting to trying to, you know, listen to be a good father and listen to my daughter and say, okay, we're going to go do this camping trip in the trailer, this thing that's out in the driveway. And, and uh, my wife was... Uh, looking uh, for a place, you know, last minute Memorial Day that we could park this thing like a campsite. And uh, she she came, she said, we have one place uh, within a 50 mile radius that uh, that we can go to. And it's this place called San Onofre, um, <clears throat> which I don't know if you remember the Naked Gun where George Kennedy and Leslie Nielsen, they're driving and... Uh, uh, Priscilla Presley broke up with him. He's like, I can't stop thinking about her. And they cut to <laughs> oh, yeah. the, the nuclear power plant that looks <laughs> yeah, like yeah. breasts. Uh, and so that's where we we ended up going. And it turns out the nuclear power plant was like 500 feet away from us. And, and, it's and been, Yeah, it's been decommissioned, hasn't it? Or yeah, it, it has like, been, but it's still a nuclear power plant. Do you know what right. I mean? I mean, it's- <laughs> You don't know what they've got in there in barrels. It's a little <laughs> bit like a whole family, a whole family was murdered in this hotel room, but don't yeah, worry. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> we cleaned exactly. it up. <laughs> it's been decommissioned. What does that mean? <laughs> does, uh, uh, and so then, yeah, it turns out that like the one place within a fit was like literally one spot and it, Felt more like a parking lot, <laughs> yeah, than a campsite. Uh, and 
and then it was just turned into this whole thing. And and it was what was great about it. I do have to say is that we actually, you know, got the thing going. And now we're gonna, you know, California is just incredible for that stuff. You know, you, you have seven, you know. Giovanni, does this mean you had to drive a car with a trailer on the back of it? Yeah, you a yourself? truck. I have. Okay. A, I drive a truck, and so okay, gotcha. Yeah, so yeah, this we, is we within. This up. is within the purview of of your skill set because. I would not want to drive. Uh, you know, a bunch of YouTube videos, and then okay. like two hours later, then it becomes like, yeah, this is safe. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah. But the no, other yeah. is the other uh, five year old a boy. Do you have one of each yeah, as well? Yeah, I have a yeah. And yeah. so the daughter wanted to go on the camping trip. Did the son? Was he equally enthusiastic? Oh yeah, yeah. Like okay. yeah, he kind. She's definitely. You know, they the girls mature a lot faster than the boys. Yeah. I, I still experience that with my twin sister. You know what I mean, uh, uh, and uh, and so yeah, she, he kind of follows her along. Um, but it was incredible. It was really great. Uh, we, we, I mean, when I say it was like a parking lot, it was literally like like you know, like the next parking spot over was this a bunch of drunk uh, people celebrating Memorial Day and having a party at ten o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah, booking the last spot at a campground is always always dicey. Uh, yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, especially in San Onofre. Which it's is, almost, yeah. it's historically almost never the best one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But we're going to do a little bit more planning. Is this like, are you that kind of family where you sort of last minute think, yes. you know what, let's, okay, always? Mm-hmm. Have you always been that? Yeah, we're getting better at it. But I think that, that now, I think that for this next, you know, we want to go, there's a, a great uh, place in California called Lone Pine where they have like the Alabama Hills. And mm-hmm. I've been up there, they have a Western museum. They shot, you know, I think they've shot in like like eighteen hundred West because of the landscape. It's just amazing, yeah. and it's right next to Mount Whitney. Um, and yeah. so I think that's going to be the spot. It's three hours away. It's just a, yeah, yeah. Anyway. It's uh, on the way to Mammoth, isn't it? Yeah, Long exactly. Pine? Yeah. So you're yeah. familiar with California, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I'm out. I'm out here. Oh, okay. Um, you yeah. are okay. Great. Okay. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah. You, I feel like you have to be sort of um, in sync with your uh, partner to do the sort of last minute trip. Is your is your wife that style as well? Oh yeah, you know way what? more Let's than do me. It. Yeah, okay, gotcha. I, you know, I, I'm turning fifty this year, and in, in December, and I, I, I feel like I, you know, the older I get, the more I just become like, no, we know we can just sit on the couch, no problem, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but she's been really like, she's just, you know, she she kind of charges and really wants to go do something. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I turned fifty last December, and oh, Josh okay. Josh will attest to the fact that I'm also married to a person who uh, is is single handedly keeping me off the couch. Yeah. 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 Oh, good. Oh, cool. I'm very lucky to. We're very lucky to have that because yeah. Of course, you never cool. look back and say, you know what was great? That couch week. <laughs> no, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so what about? Well, did you guys travel as a family when you were little? Yeah, I was gonna say it's it's such a different thing traveling. You know touring around nowadays than it was in the 70s. You know, um, there was this uh, one trip. It was actually, uh, I remember it was 1980 because it was when the the Blues Brothers uh, was released for the first time. And, and, um, and on Christmas night, it was a traditional thing. I mean, after, you know, that my family, we would always go see a movie and I remember, so we were up in Northern California and we were traveling around and we went to go see the Blues Brothers because Aretha Franklin and, uh, you yeah. know, and, and for me, uh, Steven Spielberg does a little cameo. He's in the trailer. So I was just like all about that. And I remember we pulled up to this, I, I, I mean, I'm six, so it's a long time, but it looked like a mini mall with like in front of a plate glass window and it was nighttime, Christmas, and we go in, there's a usher there taking the tickets and we, and it felt like we were in an office building. I was sorry. So we go in, there's, there's a, uh, uh, into the theater, there's a normal screening room, the whole thing. It's packed on Christmas. Um, and we sit in and I sit down 1980s, whatever I go there. Uh, the movie comes up and it's a full blown porno. <laughs> <laughs> and like three minutes goes by and I'm like, God, the Blues Brothers is awesome. <laughs> and and I hear my dad down at the end of the aisle calling my name, screaming at me. And I get up and I stand up 
and I'm like realizing I, I'm surrounded by a bunch of men in trench coats with mustaches and the whole thing. And I'm like trying to get by all the perverts, perverts who are like, you know, watching a, a, a movie in a public forum, a porn with on Christmas. For Christmas. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> uh, and then, and then we, we were in the lobby my mother's screaming at the manager. We don't know what's going on. And years later, you know, it's like this thing, decades ago, like, how did that happen? What were my, I mean, how were my parents oblivious to this? What, how, why, Christmas, did that really, is this something my, that I imagined or whatever? And I read last year in, uh, it, it was it's Cinema Speculation, the Quentin Tarantino book. Yeah. That there's mm -hmm. a, there was a guy who owned the Pussycat Theaters uh, named Vincent something or other. And he had started opening up uh, lo locations in residential neighborhoods and he got, people started, this caused a big uproar and they all finally settled that half of the rooms in his locations would show normal movies and half would be uh, pornography. And so that, it, uh, that sort of verified, oh yeah, we were in a situation like that where we, missed the the right screening room and we began. So that was one family trip that <laughs> like, <laughs> educational, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, It does. Um, I mean, that's a pretty young age to see the Blues Brothers. I, I always say that our parents introduced us to that same era of film and comedy at very age inappropriate times. Yeah. Was you, were you that kind of family? Because yeah, I mean, we were, I mean because I think our parents grew up when, you know, going to the movies was safe. You know, that was like, you know, in the 60s and early 60s, I should say, and 50s, that like that this was like something that the whole family could do. And then, you know, the 70s came. And, and I, so I think that that was, they didn't really have, I mean, uh, that the notion of censorship. Well, well, I mean, I guess it, it, it really did apply. And so movies and studios followed that code. I don't, um, so I think that that was, yeah, I mean, I remember I saw Jaws and I saw, I mean, they, we went to go, yeah. they just loved movies and, and it was just something that, you know, I guess not until my generation, we started really, you know, obviously protecting our, our kids. <laughs> I remember um, mom, our mom would sometimes, like if there was nudity, she'd like put a yeah, hand. I know. But then it was a little, it, yeah. it was a bit of a soft hand. To, to credit yeah. to our mom, who was always like, oh, okay, y'all, I won't like, I'll split the fingers a little bit. Yeah. I'm not going to be. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Also, when I was a teenager, but uh, but I think in college, I forget when Titanic came out. But uh, Mom and I you snuck beers say. into Titanic at the Bedford Mall. Yeah. Oh, um, awesome! It was, wow. it was like Your a long mom movie. Pretty and it was, cool. Yeah, yeah, she's definitely she's very cool. Yeah. Wow. We've yeah. we've told this. Uh, I think we've told this story before, but you you are familiar with the. Film Spanking the Monkey. Do you oh, know? yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. You, you are aware of the plot of the film. You remember it? Yeah, vaguely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I saw it at the time. I thought it, you know, it was a, I thought it was a really cool indie movie. And uh -huh. I called Josh and asked him if he'd seen it. And do you want to say what you said, Josh? I well, said yeah, I loved I was, it, and you said you didn't love it. Yeah, because I went down to Blockbuster, and I had heard that this cool indie movie had come out, and I didn't know anything about it. I would like to go in blind. We've already established that. Yeah. So I yeah. rented it, and I came home, and I was like, hey, Mom, you want to watch this movie? Amazing. And, uh, yeah. yeah. And I, you're not the only quickly. one I've heard that story from. I, I think I'm, right. I think actually two other people um, have said that they watched that movie with their mother. It just yeah, yeah I, we didn't finish it. I'll say yeah, that. Like, super, yeah, 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 let's just turn it off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I don't know if I really like this. Our I'm getting directions. tired. <laughs> yeah. I've never met I've never met David O. Russell, but I will. I look forward. To, I mean, I sure over the years he's heard that so many times. Yeah, like, put a yeah. put a warning on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what an incredible filmmaker, though. I mean, it's just like yeah, one of my favorites. Yeah, 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 yeah. Excuse me, guys. I'm going to sneeze. Whoa. No. <laughs> Seth once um, sneezed on his uh, show when he had David Ortiz on, uh, the yeah. baseball player, and David Ortiz laughed so hard because Seth I've, was trying not to sneeze for so long. Sneeze, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, I interview people all the time, and, you know, I've, I've done an incredible job of fighting off sneezes multiple wow. times. And oh, one I mean, time I just thought I was through, and I sneezed, just cracked one right in the face of, uh, of in this day and the age, Hall of right? Famer. David Ortiz, wow. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. What are you going nice. to do? Um, yeah. You mentioned that you, uh, your younger sister was like a, a triplet. And I feel like when you're twins, you there's two paths forward, which is either to always remind the other siblings there on the outside looking in or to be what it seems like you were, which was, uh, which was welcoming. Were the three of you always super close? 
I think so. Yeah. I mean, we grew up, you know, my, my parents, the first thing that I think was, we, we really tight family in, in, you know, part, half of that is a Sicilian mentality that, you know, the traditional thing. And then the other half is just, they were hippies and really inclusive and sort of, uh, we, we, we just, you know, talked about everything. And, 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 and so we were really close and we still are, um, um, and so, yeah, I, I guess so. I think though that there's a, definitely a bond uh, between m- myself and my twin sister that uh, is just a, a specific thing with twins. I don't know what you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, evolving in the in the womb together. I guess. Do you guys have other siblings, or is it just no? The two it's of just you? the two of us. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, we were always really tight, and and my 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 twin sister got involved in uh, in acting. She was um, she uh, did that for a while. She was actually in Dazed and Confused and a bunch of other thing, uh, yeah. projects in the nineties. And then my younger sister also did that as well. You know, there's a part of me like we we all grew up during the the advent of the the blockbuster era, and so how do you avoid that being in Los Angeles, you know what I mean? Uh, and, and it was just like the industry is just surrounding you. It's just kind of like where what you do. Did you feel, I mean, being a part of that industry at such a young age, did you feel, when you look back, do you think, oh, I was jaded, I didn't have a normal childhood? Or Because it also feels like your parents had a, made a very like sort of warm and inviting home. So maybe you didn't have that feeling. Very much so. Yeah, I, 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 um, I mean, Again, it was like a a nine year old decision that I, that after seeing Star Wars, which I think was my first movie, and Steven Spielberg and Indiana Jones and all that, it just became this thing that I was drawn to, and and then at a certain point after the first week of your first time being on a set, you're like, oh right, adult responsibilities and and all of that, and you know uh, a schedule, and you have to be, you know, the uh, you have to go to work. You, you don't have an option to, it's too expensive and all of that. And, and, uh, and so I guess at a certain point, the, the sort of, uh, Hollywood dream became, you know, a a responsibility and, and growing up, we didn't have a lot of money. And so, you know, there was, uh, um, part of that was supporting the family or augmenting that support. Um, and uh, and then yeah, I think you, you know you just kind of get it's a career that that you do that 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 became something that for me um, again it was I uh, I just I I, I I I it became an obligation something that I had that I had to uh, follow and it was just you know earning a living and it was something that 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 I'm you know uh, that I had to be grateful for I guess you know now we're gonna take a quick break to hear from one of our sponsors. This episode of Family Trips is brought to you by Nissan. Hey, Sufi, let's play a quick game. I'm going to say a word, and we both say the first word it makes us think of at the same time. Ready? I am ready, Pashi. All right, first word, cereal. Killers. All right. Oh, I, okay. We thought of different cereals. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's going to happen, but maybe let's try to lock in. Let's try to mind meld here. Uh, okay. Next word, Museum. The Louvre. Gift shop as one word. <laughs> okay. I said the Louvre. You said gift shop. Um, I know we can be better at this. Let's try one more, all right? Okay. All right, last one. Rugged. The, the Nissan, Nissan Pathfinder, Pathfinder Rock Creek, Creek where form meets function with stylish orange contrast stitching and water repellent seat material. material. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> wow. I thought, I thought you were going to say me. <laughs> For, For Rugged. rugged. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Posh, with the Nissan Pathfinder Rock Creek, you can flex your ruggedness from rocky trails and muddy paths to sandy dunes and snowy roads. Yeah, flex your ruggedness, Soup. I will. <laughs> Don't, why, stop the laughing. Featuring 18-inch beadlock style wheels and all-terrain tires, plus a tubular roof rack with up to 220 pounds of dynamic capacity for loading up your gear, the Nissan Pathfinder Rock Creek is designed to be aggressive all the way up to the front grill. And all the while, you can stay connected while you drive with wireless Apple CarPlay, allowing you to listen to unbelievable, life-changing, mind-blowing podcasts and also family trips. Why also fam? Never mind. So thanks again to Nissan for sponsoring this episode of Family Trips. Now, go find your path and enjoy the ride along the way. Learn more at NissanUSA.com. Can I do the fast part, Posh? 
Please. Intelligent four-wheel drive cannot prevent collisions or provide enhanced traction in all conditions. Always monitor traffic and weather conditions. Cargo and load capacity limited by weight and distribution. Always secure cargo. Heavy loading of the vehicle with cargo, especially on the roof, will affect the handling and stability of the vehicle. Compatible device service and consumer activation and Nissan Connect services package required. Use only when safe and legal. Subject to third-party service availability. Apple CarPlay is a trademark of Apple Inc. That's what it sounds like when you read to your kids. Yeah, I just want to get to bed. (laughs) Here we go. Having uh, the trailer in your driveway now, did you did you travel like that when you were a kid? Did you guys have like an RV or something? Or? A little bit. No, I mean, my, we, we, we know we had like a, a, a vintage Dodge Dart that mm-hmm. barely worked that we would drive up to um, because my father is from the Bay Area, San Francisco, San Jose. And so we would drive up and do that. And occasionally we would go camping. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, vague memories of that. Uh, um, you know, I do have to say though, that it was just like incredible. Obviously, no matter what you have, you know, when, 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 when you're doing that as a family, it's just like the, the best. And, and, uh, and, uh, but I, there was nothing, there was nothing like, uh, uh, it was mainly just like going up and visiting the family, really. Right. So you had yeah. grandparents up there? Yeah, grandparents and my 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 uncles and and every yeah, I mean like that's where basically my my Sicilian ancestors came and settled there and set up farms um at the turn of the century and then so it became this I remember like the Christmases that we would have were hundreds of people it felt like, you know, the cannolis wow. and all that. Yeah. Did you uh did you ever take a trip back to Sicily with your uh parents? And- that's the dream. No, I mean, I, I lived in Italy, uh, in in uh, Rome and Tuscany for a little while. Um, I've never been to Sicily though, and it's like that's one of the, the the trips that I'm that when the kids are old enough that I want to do with my wife. Um, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, Sicily is it's just like a, a completely different country from the rest of Italy, from what I understand. Do you speak Italian? I do a little bit because for for this project that I was doing. Um, a long time ago, I had to learn Italian, or and it was like monologues uh, for um, in in about a month's time uh, for this movie called Heaven uh, that I did a, a long time ago. So that was Is me that living a there. Kate Blanchett. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Kate it's Blanchett, a great Tom movie. Tickford. Oh, oh, you saw it. Oh, cool. It yeah, it's a great movie. Yeah, yeah. That was, was you did one. speak a lot of Italian. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm very surprised you're not fluent in Italian based on yeah, that movie. Not yeah. anymore. Just that dialogue. I can remember a yeah. couple of things. Yeah. yeah. That was <laughs> difficult. There's uh, like, how's how's uh, Giovanni's Italian? It's good, but it's just this one monologue. Yeah, just one. Yeah. And, <laughs> and out had, of context, if you don't see the whole movie, it's really... Oh, I remember I was, I was, you know, like two days working on this one because I had to play an interpreter following Kate Blanchett's interrogation scene. So she's telling the story and I'm following along, timing with her. And I remember learning the Italian. And then she came when she arrived in, in Italy. We were all in a meeting. She was like, yeah, that one, I just don't want it. And I remember it was like two days of my life, like trying to remember, <laughs> learn this Italian. And, you know, also learn it as if I was an Italian you know, with a dialect and all that. And it just, it was like crazy. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Did you guys ever, uh, do you remember as kids, the, like the first time you all went on a plane together? Um, I do. The first time I went on a plane was actually for acting. I remember we were sure. up in San Jose for Christmas and they needed me to come back. And so I it was I was by myself. Uh, I think I was 10 years old and I had, it was like, you know, we got, the airlines will do that. And somebody met, met me. There. So that was, uh, that was exciting, obviously, always when you're a kid. Mm-hmm. And your parents obviously had a lot of confidence in you being able to, I mean, again, different era, right? We were, you know, yeah. you talk about guests that are our age and um, they especially ones who are parents now and they kind of can't believe what their parents were okay with. Um, Oh you know, I God. feel like we're a little overprotective now. I probably. mean, seatbelts, you know, for, yeah. for, you know, that, that, yeah, I agree. I think that I, I, I try to, as, as difficult as it is, and I guess the general zeitgeist is helicopter parenting, but really try to uh, let my kids, you know, expose them to things, to what they're going to be exposed to within, you know, within a safety parameters. We went... Um, I was doing this stupid thing with my kids um, where I have this um, overhead, it's a light stand 
that hangs over. It's called a Max Menace arm. And I had this idea last week where uh, I would shoot them hanging from a harness and try to erase the harness and so, and, and do this thing with my wife where you know, she was like oblivious to it. Uh, <laughs> and, and so we went to REI and got a harness and my son looked at me, he was like, I wanna go rock climbing, you know, cause he's seen a lot of Tom Cruise movies and that happened yeah. to it. And so uh, we went to the rock climbing gym uh, which was uh, amazing. It was a revelation. I don't know if you guys have ever been to one of those. But My they, fiance got me like a, you know, go try it out thing. And I keep getting injured before I oh, really? sort of can go in there. <laughs> and I just, I want to go in sure? there when yeah. I'm like not yeah. injured to start. But yeah, yeah, I have a horrible fear of heights. Anyway, so they have these things that are called automatic boulets that are at the top of the wall. And this is like a 20 foot wall. And I, it was like one of these weird th- where my son was he's just like, this is who I am. This is what I want to do. And within a half hour, he was like going to the top and doing this whole thing. Wow. And it was, it's I, like, it's just, I, it like it hit me that I, I, I kind of, I kind of can't stop thinking about it. I also, it's really great. And I think it's funny that I was saying, yeah, it was a different era. Like you were so young when your parents took you to see the Blues Brothers and your kids are six and they've seen a ton of Tom Cruise movies. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. (laughs) Oh my God. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Mission Impossible. Yeah. There was at one point my my daughter, she was like, I want to watch Interstellar. We were like, wait, (laughs) this is like, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, this is something that, you know, it's something that I'm really passionate about. About making movies uh, on you know on both sides of the camera and and uh, and you know it's something that obviously that you can't avoid it. Your kids have a curiosity there too. So but. yeah. Do you think you're going to have to get uh, your son and I guess all your kids out to uh, Joshua Tree to climb around on those rocks and scramble yeah, around? Eventually, I don't know. I mean, the gym is just like I think it's the def, you know the automatic boule thing because you can right hang off and it's like, yeah, but terrifying. I mean, like, it's just like, you know, like this is going to be the one time that it just doesn't work or whatever. Right. And you are, you're 20 feet, but worth it. It's, it's really, I actually, I was so excited about the whole experience and almost, I kid you not emotional when my son got to the thing. Um, There was another father and his kid and his kid was trying to get up and I was so enthusiastic. I I, uh, I was trying to help the kid, you know, like just put your foot on this thing and do it. And I made him cry. It was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I got really embarrassed. It's My wife, such a we fine had to line. Leave. It's I know. such a fine <laughs> it was line. Terrible. Because you don't want your kids to see your no. fear. And no. I have so many fears. And so you're trying to like suppress them. But at the same time, sometimes you push them too hard or you push someone else's child too hard. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That was uh, terrible. I feel awful about that. There's a, uh, what a, I, this is so off uh, tangent, but um, I once saw, uh, Steve Martin and Marty Short on stage at like a charity event and they were doing this bit where they uh, compliment each other but the compliments are all insults and and Marty goes you know what I like about you Steve you're not afraid to yell at someone else's kid right (laughs) (laughs) I know yeah we always like to to shock uh, babysitters or people who come over who, when we're going to go like on date night and like hey don't worry about we're hitters you know so go right ahead (laughs) and just you know, <laughs> terrible. Do yeah. your worst. Yeah, it won't exactly. be. It won't even. <laughs> yeah. They won't even remember it. Yeah, they won't remember it. Yeah. So when you would go spend time with your sort of extended family up in the Bay Area, uh, you know, you say like a hundred people. So there's got to be a lot of kids. Would you go off with sort of cousins and? Um, Sometimes, yeah, yeah, no. But I remember uh, they're, they're actually they, everybody. Uh, I mean, it was mainly my sisters and me, uh, and there were we did have cousins, but we were uh, the way it all. So my uh, uncles are a lot younger than my father, so they didn't have kids yet, and so it was like so we were pretty much yeah the only kids there, and everybody else was ninety years old or you know uh, <laughs> gotcha. and, yeah, but yeah my my grandfather had nine siblings, um, and. Uh, 
and he was also the youngest. So it be, so just the math works that where we were pretty much just running around looking up and right. eating cannolis. <laughs> and what is the, yeah. what kind of farms were we talking when you, was it farm life when you would go up to the Bay Area to see your grandparents? Uh, it had kind of dissipated by then, um, but the, uh, it was, you know, uh, apricots and cherries mainly, and I hear almonds. Um, but I think apparently it was like a, uh, they were kind of like a big presence there. The, the DeSalvo, which was my grandmother's side of the family shipping company, we'd see trucks occasionally and all that. But I think it was mainly just like the mentality and the, the sort of the, 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 the sense of family and the work ethic. I'm actually... Uh, uh, the Italian part of me is like, I'm, I'm more Irish and I think Jewish than I am Italian, but it's like, it's like vampire blood, you know, like it's, <laughs> like, it's like the thing um, for, you know, that kind of takes over. And, you know, my father is like the traditional thing. You've mentioned cannolis a couple of times. What are we talking about when you're at a, at Christmas and there's cannolis out? Is it what I'm picturing? Is it like piled high, multi-tiered cannolis on a plate? Oh yeah, and everything is custom. Everything you know, like the the ricotta, everything. I remember them laying it out, and then they they would make ravioli, and it was just like the way it was. It was just so much. Uh, just uh, it was just it was just, just. I mean, truly, like just like a different universe from from what you experience today, and what what it all meant. I mean, I don't. It wasn't necessarily a religious thing as much as it was just everybody coming together. And and immigrants coming together, you know, like right. the the generation from the. Did you got what? Did you guys like during the holiday season? What was life like with you guys? It I mean, was it all was, a home game. We almost never yeah. went anywhere. Oh and really? It was, yeah. yeah. It was smaller. It was like a just the immediate. We would family. have we would have some of my aunts and uncles on my mom's side would sometimes join our grandmother. Yeah, we were a pretty tight four. When yeah, you say that's I cool. mean, sometimes dads, our our father's yeah. mother and uh, her sister would come. Grandma and Bibi uh, would would come for a lot of holidays. They were oh. so old. They were. I remember about my grandmother and my great aunt. They were so old the day I met them, and that when yeah. they would visit, <laughs> I feel half the trip was letting was holding their arm while you walked them down the steps. Down the steps to the bathroom, right. Or exactly. just, no, yeah. it's like they would park the car and, you know, we grew up in New Hampshire and so Christmas, it was just like, everything was oh, icy. Wow. Yeah, and so yeah. they, it was just the amount of like gentle, slow walking while there. What <laughs> felt like a an old hawk's talon, just like yeah. grabbing nice. your elbow. Oh. They'd have a good grip on you. <laughs> they had Their a real grips good were grip. strong. Just, yeah. And you're trying not to cry. Yeah, yeah amazing. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So it was, it was it, uh, I have a question. So you, obviously you have this connection with your uh, twin sister. Did you, I know obviously the odds are, are higher for a twin to have a twin. How did you feel when you found out you were going to have them? Well, we did IVF. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so that might have been more of it than the, the history of twins. Yeah, and so we were we were trying to get pregnant for a while, and then we just decided to do that. The um, it, It's crazy, that whole thing. Thing. I mean, I don't know. Yes. No, yeah, I, there's, I uh, know people have been on that journey and it must be amazing to be on the other side of it. It really is. And, but you know, it's, there's, there's incredible things about it. Like, you know, at first you're like, no, I don't want to make any dis pre -dis I just want this to be as natural as possible until they show you what is essentially like a menu of like, here's mm -hmm. your child, uh, you know? And then you start going, ah, okay, fine. We'll settle on, you know, and then, you know. Yeah, we'll get the mashed potatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, like, we Gosh, know we like mashed started. potatoes. Everybody yeah, likes right. them. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, uh, but still, it really is. I mean, it's the, I, I feel like it's the genesis of, of religion. It's just the most incredible thing, uh, regardless, having done naturally or IVF, um, it's the, uh, yeah, the best. And do you thing, feel, yeah. do, you, do you see that connection with them? Do you think, oh, do you see in them what you had? Well, yeah. I mean, because they essentially, uh, the majority of their life has been experienced through the, the COVID era right. uh, where so. there wasn't, and so we were all kind of cooped up together and and you see there's definitely more than just a bond. There's, there's they're like two halves of a whole I mean, beyond twins, it's just, you know, and, and, and I personally love that. I think that, you know, I, I have a similar thing with my siblings. And I think that having 
that person in your life for the rest of your life, hopefully, is uh, is invaluable. I'm sure you guys, you guys seem to have that that kind of relationship. Yeah, yeah. we really did, and you know, yeah. we had we, we never even realized we could, um, you know, turn it into a podcast. So obviously, yeah, we're right. our there best. it is. It all sums up. <laughs> I mean, it just keeps getting all, better. Everybody's <laughs> life is just going towards a podcast. You just realize we're all. Yeah, you don't even know it, Giovanni, right, yeah. but that's in your future. And right? Yeah. Eventually. Good. Okay. Good deal. Wow. Did you yeah. do any sort of COVID getaways? Just we got to get out of the house. Let's uh, let's go somewhere uh, in the in the thick of it. Yeah, I mean, so we actually, uh, yes, I, um, my wife was out of town. She sent me a, a, actually a link to this one property and I had some money in my pocket at the time. Uh, and and so I, the next day I was literally driving up to Marin where it is. And uh, two weeks later, we had bought this I mean, it was oh. as as our neighbor says, you you bought a pig with lipstick, you know. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was like this is such a great deal, uh, and it turned into something else. But you know, it was a little piece of land, and uh, and so uh, and and so that be, kind of became the project for us. Yeah, um, and they're actually you were probably up there just right so now. happy it wasn't next to a power plant. You're like, yeah, well. exactly. <laughs> well, we don't know actually. That's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, where we are. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it became a, a you know a project for us, and then also just you know a, a sort of a, an escape from all the other craziness and all the you know insanity that was going on with everybody, myself included, uh, uh, during that time. You know, uh, and yeah. so it's farm life. They're they're up there right now. Actually, I'm going to go oh, go great. meet with them. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Do yeah. the kids? Do you find that the kids are preferring it to being oh, in Los yeah. Angeles? Oh yeah. yeah, it's like Huckleberry Finn life. You know, they walk in with yeah. like salamanders that are that big like hey hello like, like i don't know <laughs> yeah. what this I want to get that snake away from me <laughs> you know it is not a snake um uh and yeah it's you know like there was at one point um the plumber came over he said your leech line is broken i said well what's a leech line and he told me <laughs> and i was like so when you flush it just doesn't doesn't just magically go away and uh and so then yeah just, like getting into all of that stuff it, it's just like amazing i bought a tractor which okay. you know Moving dirt yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Living your best life. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. Um, I'm very, uh, very excited uh, to see Strange Darling. And it is fun to say to everybody who's listening, it's got great reviews and know as little about it as possible. It yeah. comes out August cool. 23rd. Thank you so much. A theatrical release. And it, would you say this is, um, make a case, see it in the theaters, right? Oh, my God. Well, that's part of the whole journey of this movie uh, you know, I think one of the big things for the director and myself, we were we we really just wanted to try to do something that didn't end up in the iTunes graveyard, yeah, right? Of course. And and at a certain point, it just seemed like it was beyond inevitable that uh, it wasn't even going to do that. Uh, and and uh, we had kind of like it was just just a long story, anyways. But uh, but it's really uh, amazing. They went into the editing room and they. Uh, uh, they kind of like birthed this thing that now people are responding to. And I guess so it's coming out in theaters um, August 23rd. Um, I, I, I'm hearing like 1,500 screens or something oh, like fantastic. that. fantastic. I yeah. can't believe it. I can't believe it. Uh, and in and terms then, of like comedy or thriller horror, like do yourself a favor, the opening weekend, it, you yeah. can't. Like a comedy, you're, the laughs uh, right. in, a, in a group of people is just better. And a thriller horror to have good screams, good tension. The more yeah. people, the better. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's 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 good. I've seen it quite quite a few times now. And um, I'm, I'm just really proud. I've never been more proud of anything. So, yeah, thank you. Well, congrats on that. Before we let you go, Giovanni, uh, Josh is going to ask you the questions we ask all of our guests. Uh -oh. Speed round. Uh, here we go. All right, here we go. You can only pick one of these. Is your ideal vacation relaxing, adventurous, or educational? Uh, definitely educational. All right. What is your favorite means of transportation? Train, plane, <laughs> automobile, boat, bike, on foot, something else? Bike, bicycle. Very good. I actually, you, I, I'm like in the middle, you know, my midlife, I guess, I don't know if you guys, but I'm, I, so I bought a fancy bike recently uh -huh. and I'm just bicycle. Is it a road bike? It's, a, it? it's a, it's called a gravel bike, but it's uh okay. yeah, it's electric and it's, I just, I mean, it's just like a revelation, another, you know, 
Yeah, midlife yeah. crisis. That's just... Um, <laughs> well, good luck with that. Thank you. It's, it's, by the way, it is very nice. It's very nice when you know it's the midlife crisis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, if you could take a vacation with any family, alive or dead, real or fictional, other than your own family, what family would you like to take a family vacation with? Oh, my God. I, I mean, the fir- there's so many... It, it, any, th- I guess. I, I mean, the first is the Kennedys for for I for remember. some reason. You know, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Just yeah. because it would be, the daiquiris would be amazing. Hundred <laughs> percent, maybe right. the best. You might right. never daiquiris. be able to have another daiquiri. <laughs> right. Yeah, the wardrobe would probably yeah. be pretty yeah, it'd be on amazing. point. Yeah. yeah, incredible. You yeah. might learn that thing of like, I think if by the end of that, I might have the confidence to wear a sweater around my shoulders. Sure, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and a turtleneck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, if you had to be stranded on a desert island with one member of your family, who would it be? Oh wow, I can't even answer that. I don't even know. I would okay. it would because everybody. If I did answer that, then I would be shot sure. and killed okay. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> now that's oh. we, now we're really seeing oh. the Sicilian roots. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Yeah. Never. Well, I'm just yeah. going to name that. a family member on a podcast. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to assume that means that your twin knows, of course, yeah. it would be her, but you yeah. don't have to say it out exactly. loud because you there have a weird is. connection. Yeah, that's um, it. And uh, you're, from, uh, you're from Los Angeles. Los Angeles is hometown. Born and raised, yeah. Would you recommend Los Angeles as a vacation destination? No, not at all. I mean, oh, okay. a place to live, yeah, I think it's interesting. I think, it, you know, it, it gets, it's uh, underrated, I think. Um, but, you know, we have a lot here. Obviously, you know, uh, but mm-hmm. I think that uh, as a vacation spot, I don't know. I mean, but that's it's hard for me because I'm 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 here all the time. So you know, what's the vacation yeah. here? Yeah, I I have sort of like a, a list of recommendations that I give people, and I feel like people just people try to do too much that's too far afield when they mm-hmm. come to Los Angeles. They're yeah. like. They're staying in North Hollywood, and they're like, I'll, "I'm going to go to Manhattan Beach today." And it's like, yeah. "Oh no, you don't do that. The, like, you that's don't, not yeah. what you I do." Know. But I um, mean, the other thing is, is, like, what are you going to do? Like Disneyland or Universal Studios? I don't know. I mean, maybe you know. Yeah. I actually said something recently because I Disneyland. I'm not a Disneyland person. I mean, I, I I like you know whatever. And I I said that to somebody who I is almost like this biker guy, and he was like, "What?" <laughs> you don't like Disneyland and it became this like really strange thing. Uh, but yeah, I know exactly. I actually grew up in North Hollywood and no, I, I don't think I've ever been to Manhattan Beach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, Seth has our final questions. Giovanni, have you ever been to the Grand Canyon? No, I haven't. Do, do you want to go? A thousand percent. It's a right, bit, I, ju- I was just in Zion. Uh, oh, okay. And that- I mean, I was, that was my first thought. I was like, this is great, but I got to go to the Grand Canyon. <laughs> you know, always like greener grass, even in Zion yeah. National Park. Like, yeah. <laughs> it is a fun idea to just, don't blow it. I do think the way you approach it is smart. If you think you're going to like canyons in general, don't blow it by going to the biggest one first. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> That's Build right. up to Work it. your way up. No one at the Grand Canyon's like, I got to go see the littler ones. I know. <laughs> That's right. No, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, cool. All right. Good to know. Anyway, all right. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks so much. Congrats yeah, on the movie. You. Can't wait to see it. Great yeah, talking, man. This was my first podcast. So yeah. well, you're, the, you're a pro. The, the right, phone's going to be it. ringing off the hook. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Bye, good to talk Thank to you guys. Giovanni. Thanks. All right. See you. Bye. Thanks again to Nissan for sponsoring this episode. Learn more at NissanUSA.com.